being a young woman that I am, and because my mother dealt with things in her relationship where she didn't know how to be a wife, so how was she going to teach me how to be a wife? So when I became married, my husband and I, we had to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us how to be husband and wife towards one another. The Bible says you require no man teach you nothing. The Holy Spirit teach you all things. So it, it was a rough patch, but by the grace of God, we are still here. So I, I just like to thank everybody for coming out and allowing God to impart some information into us concerning marriage and single people allowing ourselves to wait on God for the significant other. Amen. So Evangelist West, the woman of God, gave me the church being the other woman. And uh, 1 Timothy 3, 4, and 5, it teaches us that a man, woman of God, no differentiate, no favoritism here because, you know, a, a woman can be a pastor as well. So uh, he or she must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how he can he take care of God's church? So pastors being... Uh, dedicated to their calling and the church should be taken seriously but we must operate on spiritual levels of balance Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 it teaches us about to everything there's a season and we have to know we have to understand how to flow in that thing God is not going to give us more than we can bear if we're not sure that we're able to handle that then uh, common sense will teach us, wisdom will teach us that maybe we're not ready for marriage. If we can't, we're not ready, ready for marriage. If we can't handle ministry and we can't handle our wives or husbands, vice versa. So managing the home well is one of the basic qualifications to lead. So there's no fine print. I know when I got married where it says if I'm going into ministry and my husband is going into ministry, that means he must neglect me. So uh, there's still... Uh, things that's, that keeps us qualified. There's still obligations that has to be met in the marriage. So loving and cherishing and spending time with your wife or husband is not optional. Ephesians 5 and 25 says, Husbands, you are to love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and he gave himself up for it. And if you read further, 26 and uh, 27, it says that he might sanctify yeah. and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, yeah. that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And that scripture really, uh, it applies to me because, like I said, my husband and I, we got married young. And it was a rough patch, and I really commend my husband because that's what he did with me. He made sure I, I, I it wasn't on him, y'all. How many know it was me, too? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I gave the brother some trouble. Mm -hmm. But he took time, I mean, I can remember for hours and hours. No, we would be in a room and he oh, would no. be, and it would be, it would be getting, yes, yeah, sir. I was, he would be trying to get me to understand, to see, you know, this is the word, this is what we're right. supposed to be doing, and things right. like this. Even though he didn't know it all at that time, he was walking in, in faith and allowing God to use him, but he was doing what he knew was the right thing to do. I know the Bible is the answer, mm -hmm. and I like to say that I thank you for that. Because, you know, he could have gave up on our marriage. He could have said, no, you know, I'm just going to find me somebody else. But he believed in God that God can do all things. And, you know, with man, it seems impossible. And the relationship, I'm sure it seems impossible. But God was willing. Uh -huh. So preparing our wives, our husbands preparing your wives in order to present her to Christ is one of the small things which the man of God must do right before God can give him a greater spiritual responsibility. Saving her in the extent sense of bringing her to complete spiritual wholeness and fullness is the first task. We just read an above scripture that, you know, in order to teach, in order to get the church together, your home must be exemplified as in order because it will show. So, you know, you can't get behind a pulpit. You can't get up and tell someone something.
something else concerning how to get your house in order when your house, your wife is not in order or your children is not in order. God is not pleased with that. Right. So God would not have the man to neglect his family in any shape, form, or fashion in forsaken of his church. Rather, he required the man or the woman to nurture their relationship at home so the man or the woman of God, by example, can strengthen the body. So the church being the other woman is a tactic from the enemy. That's all it is. It's important for us as believers to understand the tactics and the cunning devices of God's arch enemy. So if he's God's arch enemy, he is our arch enemy as well. So the enemy knows our weaknesses. There's no sense in trying to hide it, cover it up, sweep it up. We have to be honest like the woman of God said. If you know you have a spirit of love, you have to get on Come on now. ask God to remove the spirit of love. If you know you have a spirit of fornication, whatever it is, you can't keep your eyes to yourself. You have to be honest with yourself because God knows what we're dealing with already. So we're not hiding anything from him. We're just just telling ourselves to tell. But you have to be honest with yourself. So the goal of the enemy is to set up the people of God, is to infiltrate. First Peter 5 and 8 teaches us to be sober, yeah. vigilant because of your adversary, yeah. the devil who walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The enemy is not going to come and, you know, say, can, can I please uh, destroy your marriage? No, he, whatever foothold, he's like a rat. He don't have church is old school. I mean, it, it, it used to be so quiet up in there, you could hear a pin drop. That's how quiet, because he didn't play no games. He would tell you obedience is better than sacrifice. If I don't remember nothing else he taught me, I remember obedience is better than sacrifice. And one of the things that uh, the pastor used to say is he, he allowed you to to go through some things at different times where he had experienced because he was caught on a, the owl shell. But if you was to get him in a back room, he was a very loving man. And he was able to share some wisdom and, and uh, encouragement with you. So we know sometimes the men, a woman, a guy would be operating through the spirit of pride. If I didn't learn anything from the man of God, I learned from Pastor Taylor covering. As a pastor, if it's a man, you don't allow yourself to be in counseling with another female without someone else present. That is just not biblical. That you're setting yourself up for something. You're always supposed to have a covering. Uh, my husband, we run a daycare. Uh, yesterday, one of the parents, she left her child in the car. And uh, one of the workers, she said, should I go out and cover profit? I said, yes, ma'am, you're moving in the spirit. Because a person can say anything. You don't just let your husband be in a room with, you don't just have that kind of trust with anybody. You don't know what spirit that person That's is right. in with. You don't know who that person was with last night. That's right. So when a person is intervening and is stepping up, it yeah. comes with more than one. He says, when you uh, a spirit leaves, how many more does it bring? Seven. And you don't, that one spirit brings seven. So that's seven times seven, times seven, times seven, and so forth and so on. Wow. So we have to be wise. We have to yeah. be understanding toward these things. And like the woman of God said, you got to know how to spiritual warfare. Because if you anything like me, I'm not just going to let no sister, no church. I love the people of God. Believe prophetic corner. I love them, but they're not going to distract what God has put together. Amen. Because what God has called together, he has called us together as a ministry. Amen. So before it was a prophetic corner, it was prophet and I, or it was Brian and Walker L. And that's the way it's going to be until God calls us home. So we are not going to let anything infiltrate, try to destroy what God has put together. God is not going to give us a ministry to taint our marriage that's not built. He's not going to give us a marriage where you are so into your ministry, you are so into ministering to sister who and, so, and brother that that is destroying your marriage. Right. It's not biblical. So whether the other woman is the church or another woman, the woman of God must get in. 
let the devil come in and just tell me you, you're gonna bring this, you're gonna whisper it. Somebody, I'm the only sweet something that's gonna be whispering in that ear. Because I asked myself, you know, I hear my husband when he first came in, and it's just his personality. If he's gonna do it, he's gonna do it all the way. And I sometimes I didn't understand. I'm like, man, this this brother he is really a Jesus freak. <laughs> this brother he is is all the chain, you know, about God. And it it makes me desire to be better. That's right. Meaning he's doing his job right. because sometimes I'm like, okay, you know that. Let me get this. So I gotta know this. It pushes me to to do more, to be a better person, to uh, uh, flourish my relationship with God. And one day I was telling him in a car. I said, you know, at one point because of something that he said, it made me think, you know, am, am I really ready to, you know, die for God? You know, I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. But I was telling him the other day. I said, baby, I'm ready. If I gotta get my head chopped off, you can chop me off because I'm ready to be with Him. Is everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm not afraid of the enemy. Right? I'm ready at first when the, the ram's home. Every mm. time my husband brought a ram's home, it, it, it's some spiritual warfare that's going on. Mm. And I was, the last time, the time before last, I told him, don't blow it. But that, that's not moving in faith. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm telling God that I, you can't handle whatever come my way. Mm. That you, you, you're not building me up. I'm not strong enough to handle. If you desire to blow the home, prophet, blow the home. I'm ready because God has prepared. all day. 
that you can be, but I'm not all that I could be just for him because it's part of his ministry. It's part of my ministry. When I know how to treat my husband and when I know how to minister to him, I can better minister unto people because the way that God has equipped him and has equipped me, if I love God with everything and I give him everything, I'll be able to give that man everything. Yeah. But if I don't love God the proper way, I won't be able to love him the proper way. I won't even be able to love myself the proper way. I'll just let people do whatever they feel. I'll let somebody abuse me. But I know the queen that I am, the, the, the God, the child of God that he's called me to be. I know who I am. So I'm, I'm not afraid of the enemy. I'm not afraid to tell him to get the hell on and move on out the way because this is my house. Yeah. We building our house on a solid foundation. Ain't no devil in hell, no imp, no motorbell, no leviathan, no demon gonna come in and destroy what God has put together. Amen. I just encourage you all, whether you're single, you're married, you gotta get in the trenches. You gotta be able to bind those spirits up and let the enemy know that I'm here. I know the word just as you know the word, but I know who I am. Mm -hmm. Jesus died Come on. The right sister is going to bind up them 